my lord and my god i firmly believe that you are here that you see me that you hear me i adore you with profound reverence i ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful my immaculate mother saint joseph my father and lord my guardian angel intercede for me well in the United States of America, and I'm sure many other countries in the Northern Hemisphere, the back-to-school season that starts in late summer and early fall here in the United States after Labor Day, really in full swing of back-to-school, can always be a time of great excitement and a real chance for beginning again. And even those that have not been in school for you know, 5, 10, 20, 40, 50, 60 years, there's still something about this time of the year, back to school, that can offer each of us the opportunity to, to begin again, to, to remember what it was like to go to school for the first time or to go back to school at the beginning of an academic year and... You had new new classes and a new classroom and there were certain times in your life when maybe you even switched buildings and went to a new school, a new school building, going from grammar school to middle school to high school or going from the first floor to the second floor. You had new teachers, a new homeroom, a new locker, a new a new schedule. Everything was was so new and this newness, oftentimes rather than being intimidating, it could be a little scary if you're going to a brand new place and you don't know anyone and you're not sure how you're going to fit in. But oftentimes this newness was exhilarating We, because it's the same friends oftentimes, right? It's the same after that first day of kindergarten. Uh, it really can be, it's the same friends. It's my same friends. I know, I know my friends. I have them with me, but all these things about where we are and what we're going to be doing this year and what we're going to be learning, it's all new. It's a chance to begin again. And a lot of different things change throughout the year, but this newness, this excitingness, and I remember many times, even in seminary with the beginning of classes, being very excited about the things that we're going to get to learn. Oh, this year we're we're going to study the church fathers in a deeper way or, you know, having Trinity class and spend an entire semester just learning about the Blessed Trinity and how great that was. And the the newness at the beginning of the year is is a wonderful enthusiasm. It can really be a, a good launching off point. And Jesus, that's the kind of newness that you want us to have as we live the gospel, as you present the gospel to us. It's not just doing the same old thing. It can't become routine or static. St. Jose Maria said in a homily that routine is a sepulcher of piety. Routine is a sepulcher of piety, right? Our, our piety has to be always new. We can't We can't get into just a routine. Now, that doesn't mean that we're inventing new ways to pray every day or we're always trying to do something completely novel. No, but rather, geez, today. Today isn't a new school year. It's a new day. You've given me a new day to be with you today, Jesus. You've given me these 24 hours, some of which have already passed, but you've given me this time to be with you, to grow in friendship with you. And so it's new. We hear in the gospel how the crowds come to Jesus and say, uh, The disciples of John fast often, and so do the disciples of Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. Jesus said to them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away, and then they will fast. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece of a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does the tear... He will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. 
new wine is put into fresh wineskin. And Jesus, that's the attitude that you want us to have as we try to grow in holiness this day, today. New wine is put into fresh wineskins that we have the chance to begin again. And we're not just going to do the same old thing we did yesterday. Um, we're, it's the same you, Jesus, right? Just like with the example of beginning school, we have our same friend. Jesus, you're our friend. And today is a, a new opportunity. It's a new way. There's going to be new chances today to spread your good news, to introduce you to someone. Jesus, you're our friend. And here we are on our new day. And if we meet someone that hasn't met you yet, well, I want you to meet my friend Jesus, right? Maybe we're not going to say it just like that, but with real naturalness. How are we going to try to introduce you to the people that we meet throughout the day and more importantly, introduce them to you? It's never too late to begin again, to have this, this newness of vision, this newness of life. Jesus we want that joy. And if we've lost it, if we become a little bit stale in that, that can happen, you know, as a school year goes on, you get very excited about learning all these things, but then <laughs> come the exams and the papers and the work of doing the reading and the homework and things get busy and there's a lot of extracurricular activities and all of a sudden that excitement that we felt on the first or second day of school, well, where did it go? I I don't want to be doing this anymore. I can't wait. You know, maybe already in October saying, well, I can't wait for next year. I just want this year to be over. I can't wait for next year. And maybe that can be, you know, by 10 o'clock in the morning, we can be saying, I can't wait for tomorrow. I just want tomorrow to be here. Well, no, we still have the rest of the day today. And Jesus, it's never too late. It's never too late to begin again. And we're never too old to begin again in the traditional form of the Mass, also known as the extraordinary form, the Mass begins with what were called the prayers at the foot of the altar. And it would be a recitation of Psalm 43. And the priest would say, in altari dei, and the server would respond, deum qui litificat juventute meam, right? I'll go to the altar of God, to God who gives joy to my youth. In troi baratari dei, a deum qui letificat juventutem meum. And then that line, just to think, to pray that that psalm, right? And think about some of these, these priests um, who were praying this psalm every single day for 50, 60, 70 years, some of them. So when they're in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, Every morning, praying in Tereba Tari Dei, Adeum Quilitificat Juventutem Meam, right? I'm going to go to the altar of God today, the God who gives joy to my youth. The God who gives joy to my youth. We are always young when we are in love with Jesus, when we begin again. We're always young. We're never too old to start fresh, to start new with you, Lord. You make us always young, always joyful in that way, always able to live a real youthful optimism. And if that pessimism, that jadedness has crept into how we live and how we view the world, then we need to pray these words of the psalm, right? In tore adaltari dei, ad deum qui letificat juventutem mem. I will go. I'll go today, Jesus, to the altar of God, whether it's in the celebration of the Mass or where you're reserved in the Blessed Sacrament, truly present among us. But today, if I'm feeling a little too old, I'm feeling a little too tired, I'm going to go to the altar of God because, Jesus, you are the God who gives joy to my youth. You make me always young. You are the new wine, the new wine, and you want me to be that fresh young wineskin so that today we can live your gospel, live this relationship with you, Jesus. Always new, always young, beginning again. We ask our mother to pray for us as many mothers send their children off to these first days of school. So Our Lady sends us off, right? She sends us off in this youthful way 
so that we can go and do the real work of living the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.